welcome to vaishayas so we'll be continuing with the plums series of polity governance and schemes today okay so if you are new to this channel please consider subscribing this channel so that you will be getting daily free updates on upsc and if you are looking for a good quality test series then you can contact the number which is given on the screen 7200681675 Let's move on to the first question of the day. So the question reads: In India, if a religious sect or minority is given the status of national minority, what special advantages it is entitled to? And three statements are given. First is it can establish and administer exclusive educational institutions. Now, first you have to decode the questions. If you decoded it very well, this is aligned towards the portion fundamental rights and Article thirty of fundamental rights. It clearly mentions about the minorities and article 30 it mandates that all the minorities whether based on religion or language they shall have the right to establish and establish and administer okay establish and administer educational institutions okay so uh, this is clearly stated in article number 30 so this statement this first statement has to be correct so you search for the first statement in the answer so first statement where it is there in a C and D, so you can eliminate this option number B. Just a minute. Okay, then come to the second statement. The president of India automatically nominates a representative of the community to the Lok Sabha. Okay, so we have not uh, we have learned nothing about such a provision. Lok Sabha is such an important body, and Parliament is also such an important portion in polity. So if this uh, if this uh, if there was a provision like this, then we would have definitely heard about this. Okay, so. since we haven't learned anything regarding this statement you can in you can infer that this statement is wrong okay otherwise also if you are uh, strong in your basics if you are strong in your polity basics then you can easily reach at the answer through the knowledge method only i'm telling uh, in the exam pressure by chance if you are not able to recollect things you have to apply logic over there okay so in this case this is not correct so two is not correct so you can eliminate this d also so you left it left out with a and c okay now search for the three uh, uh, third statement it can derive benefits from the prime minister's 15 point program yes uh, the schemes are also important okay sometimes it will be helping in arriving at the correct answer so even though you are not covering schemes in a very holistic manner you have to you have to learn what the scheme is all about what it is dealing with okay the very basic the very basic framework of those schemes which sector it is related to at least that you should know okay so in this case 15 point program yes it is uh, regarding the underprivileged sections okay so pm 15 point program it is for underprivileged sections and it also especially mentions minorities okay um, they are underprivileged and they are disadvantaged sections disadvantaged sections and for them also the benefits of government schemes should reach in that way only we can ensure the equity okay equity of the country okay so 15 point program it is also related to the minorities so the correct answer comes out to be c 1 and 3 only okay uh, understood okay now uh, coming to the second question all the revenues received by the union government by way of taxes and the receipt for the conduct of the government business are credited to and three four funds are given okay so all the constitutional funds are non constitutional funds that you have to be very clear which is constitutional and what is its purpose we shall um, what credits and debits okay what are the credits and debits to different kinds of government accounts that you have to be clearly uh, learned of okay so here in this question it is talking about all the revenues received by the union government so uh, logically you can think it will be going into the consolidated fund of india only okay this is fairly an important fund and uh, all the revenues taxes etc they'll be going to the uh, contingency sorry consolidated fund of india okay option number c contingency and the public account deposit and advance fund okay the fourth is not such important but please go through that okay and the other three funds they are very important and you have to learn about the mandate of all these three funds very carefully and very holistically okay so the correct answer here is consolidated fund of india quite a factual direct question then come to the next question when the annual union budget is not passed by the lok sabha okay what is going to happen so if the union budget is not going to be passed what is going to happen so in this kind of questions the options will be little twisted in that case if you feel that two or more options are going to be correct what you can do is you have to go to 
the constitution you have to think about the constitution what is stated in the constitution that is going to be your answer because anyway one of the option has to be the answer okay so in case you are feeling like all the statements are looking similar and all that can be logically correct you have to think for that one option which is constitutionally correct okay so that is the main keyword here so here here also look through the options it seems to be correct okay looking at the option so here constitutionally the correct answer is d prime minister submits the resignation of the council of ministers okay so uh, indirectly what is this meaning if the union budget is not passed by lok sabha it is meaning that the parliament okay sorry the prime minister uh, along with the council of ministers they are not the ruling part the ruling party okay the ruling party they are not having the majority this is the meaning okay so they are not having the majority that is why union budget is not getting passed so that is not a democratic way so according to the constitution or the democratic way there should be the ruling party should be the majority party okay so here since the ruling party is not having the majority union budget is not getting passed okay so in that case democratically the prime minister stand, uh, and along with the council of ministers they have to be resigned okay that is the democracy democratic rule so here the correct answer comes out to be d so the reason is ruling party it should be the majority party okay now come to the next question the prime minister of india at the time of his or her appointment okay this is also uh, a fairly standard question and it is uh, clearly stated in the chapter prime minister from lakshmi kant okay so here uh, look through the options take a minute and read the options it is a very very factual question so in this question you can't apply logic and all you have to learn that's it okay so here the correct answer comes out to be a the prime minister need not to be necessarily a member of one of the houses of the parliament that is a prime minister the one who is going to become the prime minister he or she should not uh, he or she he or she should not be necessarily a lok sabha mp or rajya sabha mp that is not mandatory okay so one who is not a lok sabha or rajya sabha mp can also be the prime minister but but there is a condition he or she must become one of the member of the houses within 6 month okay from the date he is he or she is appointed as the prime minister from that date 6 month will be given and within that 6 month he or she should become the member of parliament that is the condition so correct answer comes out to be a okay now come to the next question a deadlock between the lok sabha and rajya sabha calls for a joint sitting of parliament during the passage of and three bills are given okay ordinary legislation money bill and constitutional amendment bill out of this which are correct so in in this kind of questions okay where all uh, the joint sitting of parliament can be called where all uh, the deadlock can happen okay all these kinds of data what you can do is uh, instead of making up you can make a flow chart kind of thing for everything okay so immediately if you are able to recollect that flow chart during the time of exam you can infer all the details from this okay otherwise this would be a tough job remembering each of the thing like a, a, tab a tabular format it will be difficult instead of that learning the concepts will be easy okay so here also the constitutional amendment bill money bill they are not subjected to this joint sitting okay no deadlock in case of money bill and constitutional amendment bill deadlock can happen in ordinary legislation so correct answer comes out to be a one only okay that's the end of today's session so we'll meet in the next week in the next episode until then stay tuned thank you